literally all through the 2020 elections, all we heard was ban the rifles over and over and over again. They talk so much about banning semi-automatic rifles that if I was an alien watching the 2020 election from space, I would swear there were AR-15 gun battles going on in the streets of America every single minute, every single day. Cheryl Gay Stolberg of the New York Times reports an assault weapons ban is gaining traction for Democrats on the campaign trail. And I got assault weapons banned. I got magazines that could not hold more than 10 rounds in them. I got them eliminated. I supported a ban on assault weapons. So I have long supported the assault weapon ban. From the perspective of a veteran, why the kinds of weaponry, anything remotely like what I trained on in order to go serve in a war zone, has no business being sold anywhere near an American right. school or church or neighborhood. And hell yes, we're going to take your AR-15, your AK-47. Senator Harris, you have said that you would take executive action on guns within your first 100 days, including right. banning imports of AR-15 assault weapons. That's right. But here's the problem. The FBI just came out with their most recent uniform crime report. And that crime report says that 454 people were killed with a rifle. Not just AR-15s, but all rifles. Same year, 203 people were killed with shotguns. And make no mistake. Those numbers are tragic, but what's more tragic is what they're not talking about because it completely and utterly destroys their whole assault weapon narrative. And that's 1,732 people were killed with knives or cutting instruments. Yes, you heard that right. More than two times the number of people were killed by knives than there were with AR-15s or shotguns or all rifles combined. If you take out the shotgun deaths because you know. You don't need an AR-15. It's harder to aim, it's harder to use, and in fact, you don't need 30 rounds to protect yourself. Buy a shotgun. That means over three and a half times more people were killed with knives than with rifles. And it gets worse. And by worse, I mean it gets worse for the anti-gun lobby's narrative that AR-15s are these disproportionate killing machines that must be banned. Because not only are more people killed with knives than they are rifles, more people are killed by hands and feet. In 2020, 662 people were killed by hands and feet compared to 455 that were killed by rifle. I have way more respect for someone that comes to me and says, you know what, Colon, I don't think we should have any guns. We should ban them all. I vehemently disagree with this, but I can at least give them credit for being upfront about what they really want to do. My problem is with the people who try to hide the fact that they really just want to ban all the guns because they know it would be wholly unpopular. So what they do is act like they just want common sense gun measures, which when you hear it, leads you to believe that they just want to pass a couple of laws and that's it. In reality, it's nothing more than a strategy to get what they truly want, ban all guns. The anti-gun lobby is using the same strategy to ban guns that you would use to boil a frog to death. Although frogs love water, when I hold it over this pot of boiling water, this frog is very uncomfortable and climbs to get away from it. Most people would scream bloody murder if the government tried to ban all guns at once. Now the water in this pot is room temperature, 69.4 degrees. So he's comfortable when I put him in. That's the current state of the Second Amendment. If I turn the burner on low flame, his body temperature will adjust and slowly he will heat up with the water. This is what universal background checks is. The water temperature has risen to 80 degrees and the frog is the same temperature and still comfortable. This is what an assault weapon ban is. If I turn up the burner slowly again, he won't notice because he'll continue to change to be the same as his surrounding. But now, because we're raising the temperature slowly, he doesn't recognize the danger he's in. He just keeps going along with the changes in his surroundings. Eventually, we can turn up the burner to a deadly boil. He will just keep trying to adjust with it. And the full boil is a ban on all the rest of the guns, and then they'll go after that and then try to ban knives like they tried to do in the UK. Common sense gun laws is a sham, people. It means nothing. It's designed to manipulate you and make you feel ashamed that you don't want to do what they want. Stop letting people who have 24 hour personal armed security and live in gated million dollar communities tell you how to defend your life and the people that you love. Because when it comes down to the get down, they won't be there. You know how frightening it is to think about what happens in the moments before, during, and even days after having to use your gun in self-defense? 
When you first start carrying a gun for protection, it can be a very scary and nerve wracking experience, especially if you haven't gotten the education and training you need to feel confident. I've been there myself hoping I never have to go through a self-defense shooting, which is why I'm a member of the USCCA. As a USCCA member, you can eliminate some of the stress of carrying a gun for protection by accessing the amazing wealth of firearm education, training, and current state-specific gun laws of your state or states you may travel to. This can help you be prepared for or hopefully even avoid a self-defense incident. As a bonus, members automatically become insured on the self-defense liability insurance policy purchased by an issue to the USCCA. Click below to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And most importantly, make sure you hit that bell symbol.